Well, joining us now is John Allen, editor of Crux, and he joins us via Skype from one of my favorite states, Colorado. Colorado and Wyoming are my two favorite states. Uh, John, thanks for being with us today. Jay, Father Reed, good to be with you guys. <laughs> another, st another snowstorm coming in this weekend, I hear. Uh, as a matter of fact, there is a gentle spring snow falling even, falling even as we speak, guys. Ah. <laughs> hey, can I, can I start by saying one thing before sure. we dive in? What I want to say is this. You can take Crux out of Boston. We're, of course, no longer part of the Boston Globe now. But you can never take the Boston out of Crux. Okay? We are always going to feel connected to the Archdiocese of Boston, to Cardinal Sean, and to you guys. So it is a real honor to be with you this morning. I like your well, spirit. We always enjoy having you on, John. Hey, tell us a bit about the latest at Crux. Well, Crux was, of course, launched uh, in September 2014 as a project of the Boston Globe. And, of course, we always knew going in that this was an unusual thing for a major secular newspaper in America to do, which was to create an independent platform focused exclusively on the Catholic Church. Uh, it was always predicated on them being able to make the money side of things work, and in the end, it just didn't work. They weren't able to generate the kind of advertising income they needed to, to justify it. But So they made a decision to back out, but in the context of that, I have to say, They've been as gracious about this as you can possibly imagine. I mean, the Globe essentially gave me ownership of the Crux site and all of the intellectual property related to it, completely free of charge, uh, which then allowed us to seek uh, other sponsors and other partners. We were lucky enough right away uh, to have somebody step in in the form of the Knights of Columbus. Uh, they have become our major partner. We have, However, we have attracted support from other places. I mean, really coast to coast, if you think about it. Uh, the Diocese of Brooklyn and the Archdiocese of New York are both given us help. The Archdiocese of Los Angeles has given us help. Uh, so it's been incredibly gratifying how there has been this kind of groundswell out there that says what we need is an independent, nonpartisan platform for smart journalism about the Catholic Church. And, and thanks be to God, uh, that's the business we're still in. You mentioned smart journalism, John. I, I have to ask you, um, I don't know if you get asked this much at this point, but where did your, your love and your passion for journalism and also the church, where did that come from in your background and your growing up? Well, Father, you'll appreciate this story because I know you have a background in Catholic education. Uh, I was hired at one stage in my life to teach religion at a Catholic high school. They also had a journalism class, but in the grand tradition of Catholic secondary education, they didn't have anyone remotely qualified to do it. Uh, the principal asked me, do you have any journalistic background? And I said, well, I read the paper. Uh, and he said, well, that's good enough. You, you know, you're now our journalism guy. Uh, and in a desperate attempt to kind of figure out what this was all about, uh, I started hanging out. Uh, this was in L.A. at the time at the L.A. Daily uh, News and the L.A. Times. And just fell in love with the whole craft of journalism. Then I started freelancing. One of the places I started freelancing for was the National Catholic Reporter. In fairly short order, they hired me. Uh, then they asked me if I would like to go to Rome, which in my business is like being asked if you want to play in Fenway Park, right? I mean, <laughs> the obvious answer is yes. Uh, and, uh, and the rest is history. I mean, basically, I went to bed one night as a total amateur cub reporter and woke up as the dean of the English language Vatican press court. <laughs> well, you, you keep your finger on the pulse of contemporary issues through the lens of, of faith, John. What are some of the opportunities and challenges on the horizon? Well, obviously, one of the big issues that we're trying to track both here in the States and also abroad these days would be religious freedom. Mm. Uh, you know that we have huge uh, domestic church-state tensions. Uh, the Supreme Court is presently looking at the Little Sisters of the Poor case. We expect we will get some kind of decision maybe in June. Uh, they, are, they seem to be desperately trying to avoid a split 4-4 ruling on that case, but not yet clear what the roadmap to that is. Uh, and, of course, religious freedom is a huge issue for the U.S. bishops. We are coming up on their annual Fortnight for Freedom campaign, uh, June 21st through July 4th, which will culminate with a mass in the Basilica of the Immaculate Conception in Washington. Meanwhile, internationally, the religious freedom uh, situation, if anything, is even more harrowing. I mean, we have a story on the correct site today uh, about a Catholic bishop in southern India uh, who was just recently kidnapped and savagely beaten during the course of a night uh, before he was finally released. Uh, the details are still sketchy, but India has had a huge problem uh, with tensions between the Hindu majority, which is increasingly nationalistic and increasingly radicalized, and the Christian minority. 
There's an average of about one physical assault on Christians in India every other day. We still have the situation with the genocide in Syria and Iraq uh, directed at religious minorities, including Christians uh, by ISIS, and on and on. Uh, so clearly one of the issues that people of faith, I think thoughtful people of faith, are going to have to engage going forward is how do we make a principled case for religious freedom, both in a country and in a world where uh, an increasing swath of the population seems hostile to the whole idea? Just quickly, John, you know, we have here in Boston, as you know, the Cardinal Sean effect. And of course, internationally, we have the Pope Francis effect. It must be a very exciting moment for you in your position to be looking at the church internationally with Pope Francis always full of surprises. Yeah, I mean, just a couple of weeks ago, I mean, once again, he pulled another rabbit out of the hat with that, that trip, trip to the Greek island where he, you know, in a, in a total surprise move, brings 12 refugees, three refugee families back with him on the papal plane to Rome, the first time anybody other than Vatican officials and reporters had ever traveled on the papal plane. Uh, yeah, I mean, listen, from a strictly capitalistic point of view, this guy is the greatest gift to the news industry uh, in our long history. Uh, he is just an endlessly fascinating, mesmerizing figure. Now, of course, he is also to some extent controversial. People will debate particular positions he takes. Uh, I mean, you did that bit on Ladalto C. You know very well, Father, that there were some both inside and the Catholic community that didn't exactly fall in love with that document uh, overnight. But the one thing absolutely no one could deny uh, is that Pope Francis is relevant. Uh, you know, everything he says and does because he is just such a compelling figure. Uh, there is no issue on the planet today where his moral voice isn't right at the center of the conversation. Hmm. Uh, and if you're somebody who believes that the Catholic Church has some moral wisdom to bring to public policy questions, to see a pope who is so unrelentingly relevant is just incredibly exciting. Oh, John, I'm, I'm a big fan of Crux. We're, we're almost out of time. How can people access your work online and, and find out what I find so attractive about it? just the great work? Well, we are at www.cruxnow.com. You can also follow Crux on Twitter and Facebook. We are a 24-7, one-stop shopping destination for Catholic news analysis and commentary. We'd love to have your viewers with us. John, always a pleasure having you on. Have a great day. Thanks, guys. God bless. You bye -bye. too. Bye.